The Fischer-Snedeker distribution is simply the shape that we would find if we formed a ratio of two separate independent estimates of a population variance. Now we don't have to have the same number of people in our numerator and denominator estimates. That doesn't really matter. It'll change the shape of the Fischer-Snedeker, but all of those different distributions will all be F distributions. So why should we care? Well, let's remember what we were trying to do. We were trying to make an inference about whether a factor mattered in the population. That is, we're trying to determine whether all those treatment offsets are actually equal to zero. Now, in our example, we only had three treatment offsets, one for each of the different airlines. But we can have factors with hundreds or thousands of treatment offsets. So what we need is a way to tell at once whether all those treatment offsets are likely to be zero or not likely to be zero. Remember, we're forming a sample model, and so our t sub j's will all be non-zero, just due to sampling error alone. So what we'll want to know is, are the treatment offsets more different from zero than we should expect by random chance? Let's pause and think about this. All those taws are varying around zero. That is, the treatment offsets are formed as a deviation from the grand mean. Another way of stating the null hypothesis is that the variances of the taws is equal to zero. Notice that if a variance is equal to zero, it means every observation in the data set is identical. That is, there is no difference between each observation and the mean. So if I say that the variance of the taws is zero, that is identical to me saying all the taws are identical in the population. So in essence, if we can test the variance of the taws, we can figure out whether we think the population taws are different from zero or not on the basis of sample data. And the way we're going to do that is to form our test statistic as a ratio of variances. That is, we form an F statistic of the variance of our treatments, the variance of the T's, divided by our variance of errors. Notice that our treatment offsets, they'll be different from zero in our sample, but we're going to be able to tell whether those treatment offsets are reasonably different from what we would expect just by chance error. So think about this question. If there is a large true effect of the treatment factor, that is, the toss of J's in the population are very different, what kind of values of F do you think we should expect?